formula that I already just proved to you. Okay, for the next formula I suppose to prove to you, the way we start is, is like this. Again, we start with the Fourier expression which say any periodic function f of g is equal to a constant a naught plus summation of a k cos k omega naught t, this summation, plus summation of b k times psi of k naught t, that is the Fourier series expression. So start with that Fourier series, what I want to do now is to multiply both sides of this equation by the term psi of m omega naught t. I multiply both sides by that term, psi of m omega naught t, multiply both sides with psi of m omega naught t, multiply this term also, this is what we got. And then after that, we want to integrate both sides between zero and capital T. So we integrate both sides, integrate both sides, integrate every term, integrate every term. Okay, so this is what we had so far. Now, if you look at equation 29 carefully, we will see that the first term on the right hand side involved with the integral of a sine term. And according to our previous lecture, we know the integral of sine of, of m omega naught t should be equal to zero. Also, if you look at the second term in equation 29, we will see that the integral of cosine times sine, that is also equal to zero, according to my previous lecture. So for that reason, you can see that the first two terms appear on equation 29, they will become zero. The first two integral become zero. The last term of equation 29 on the right hand side, you have the integral of bk psi of k omega naught t times psi of m omega naught t. So on the right hand side, all you have is the last term. Okay, so let's take a look. Now, the first term, uh, as I said to you, the first and the second term on the right-hand side go to zero. The last term on the right-hand side of equation 29 is also zero. The only exception you have is when k equal to m. In that case, then, the last term of the right-hand side is not equal to zero. Let's take a look again. You see, the last term of equation 29 on the right-hand side, the integral of that is always equal to zero because if k and m, they are different, then the integral is equal to zero. On the other hand, if k is equal to m, then the integral of psi k over naught t, psi of m over naught t will be equal to capital T over 2, okay? If this is true, then the integral of psi of k omega naught t, psi of m omega naught t, dt from 0 to t, that integral, if k and m, if they are the same, then that integral is equal to capital T over 2. That is based on the relationship that I proved to you earlier. So the last term on the right hand side of equation 29 is also equal to 0 unless k equal to m then in that case, the right-hand side becomes capital T over 2. So based on that, you can see what we have is when, when 
uh, when, when k is equal to m, actually when k equal to m, this psi times this one is the same thing as psi square, the integral of psi square. Okay? Psi square of k omega naught t. When k equal to m, then the product of psi k omega naught t times psi m omega naught t becomes psi square of k omega naught t. And that integral is equal to capital T over 2, as I told you right here. So, that integral, when k equal to m, is this what we got? And we all know that the integral of that psi square term is equal to capital T over 2, according to my previous lecture. And therefore, equation 30, equation 30 can be simplified as indicated in the next slide. You see, that integral, the last term, is equal to capital T over 2. Okay? And on the left-hand side, let's see what do you have. On the left-hand side of equation 30, what you have is the integral of f of t psi k omega naught t. So the integral f of t times psi of k omega naught t dt is equal to that from 0 to capital T. So from that equation right there, we can easily solve for the unknown constant v sub k, which is given by this formula right there. So basically, I already derived for you, I already proved to you that the constant v sub k in the Fourier series is given by this formula that I stated to you earlier. And similar idea can be used to obtain the formula for a sub k. And that's the end of the lecture. Acknowledgement.